loosened up. I mean, the thing about copy protection is it punishes only the good people. The bad people who want to steal the music are not stopped by the copy protection. Right. Right? So they'll find a way around it in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So the only people inconvenienced are the ones who paid for it. Right. So, and, that, and that's what EMI and, and Universal gradually come to realize. So they're, they're the ones who have taken the copy protection off and they're trying it as an experiment. And mm -hmm. I think they'll be rewarded. Um, and the TV companies are now starting to gradually lighten up. I was showing today about how they all now have their TV shows for free mm -hmm. on the internet and um, in, in great quality with very few commercials and they're right to do that, you know? I mean, why did they go to the expense and the trouble of making these TV shows if they don't want people to see them? So. Yeah. You know, we had um, a, a similar a, a correlation here in the field that we've been talking about a lot is um, the openness of software. The, um, you know, nonprofits have a lot of data. We've got clients that we're serving. Um, We've got uh, donors that we're, you know, we're tracking and cultivating. We've got general stakeholders that we're working with. I mean, just lots and lots of records and lots and lots of data that we're always dealing with. And we're typically putting it into these systems that are very closed. You can get your data in, you're getting it back out, that's so easy. So if you, um, you know, want to use a tool, um, you get, uh, if you want to use one tool for your e-newsletter, right, and one tool for your general data management, and another tool to raise money, you can't move your data around to, to really get the whole picture of someone. You're locked into, you know, keeping keeping your newsletter people here, you know, your mm. your general people here, your, your donors here. Um, and we've been talking about uh, a lot about how do we open that up so that we can exchange data more freely. Um, I think one great model for our sector has actually come from the for-profit world, and that's Salesforce. Mm. You know, they've got a completely open platform. They have built an entire business model around saying, we've opened it up, guys. You know, you build all the little things that are going to make Salesforce even better. Um, so do you see other things like that in the software world? Are we heading towards more, more openness in general out there? Hmm. Well, that's a, that's a hard question. Yeah, you did. Me I. I mean, first of all, <laughs> your world is one that I actually don't know anything mm -hmm. about. I mean, I don't know anything about the nonprofit world, and I really don't even know anything about the corporate for-profit world. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm vaguely aware of what Salesforce is, but uh -huh. I mean, I write a consumer true, stuff true, true. about. Phones we'll and right out. cameras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes, okay. I, I see a B2B scalable internet solution. <laughs> All right, well, let's go back to mobile then. Sorry. That's but, okay. but, but, but you know what? But there is, there is always movements on the, on the open source front, and there are always movements to make things open. Uh -huh. You know, Apple keeps choosing open formats, you know, H.264 for their videos, and, um, you know, they. They uh, and you know Microsoft has even sniffed around at open source projects a little bit. Right, right. Dell now sells you know Linux equipped machines and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's it's a fascinating world. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't ever predict the future of technology. Nobody can. But yeah, I do love the idea. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about. I think last year you wrote a column. Oh, first of all, I saw your TED talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that TED talk. <laughs> anyway, uh, the other thing is that. Um, that's what inspired me to ask you to be here. But um, I the, the other thing is that um, uh, I think last year you wrote a column at the end of last year that this would be the year of the mobile. That, or you say cell phone, but we say mobile. Oh, geez. Because there's no cell towers anymore, right? They're all, they're all digital. Oh! Right? Okay. No, there's still cell towers. True. <laughs> anyway, so, we, uh, so it's going to be the year of the cell phone. Um, and we, you know, we're really fascinated by the idea of mobile phones for nonprofits. Um, um, I think, like I mentioned this morning, this idea that you know, we can actually really use them to help people create change. That you, um, I think PayPal now has a text to give thing that they do. So you can actually text message your supporters. They can make a donation that shows up, you know, from, is withdrawn from their PayPal account. Hmm. There are lots of other services that do that, that let you um, text message to uh, your constituents and get them to send you an email address so you can send them you know, more communications or mm -hmm. donate or um, you know, click here, you know, send you a text message with your phone number of your congressperson, right? So you can call and complain about stuff. Hmm. So that's a really cool technology that we're really trying to figure out how do nonprofits exploit this. But, if you were talking to a nonprofit, what would you tell them about why mobile phones are going to be so important? Why is it the year of the mobile? Um, well, that, that one I can answer. Okay, um, good. 
<laughs> Actually, you know, people talk about uh, last year the big deal was the iPhone. Mm -hmm. But what I don't think people appreciate is why the iPhone was such a big deal. And it's not because of the phone. I mean, it could have been a kerosene powered, you know, hand crank Let's admit it though, it's beautiful. It is beautiful, okay. and there's a lot of phenomenal technologies in there, but yeah. not enough to change the world. What changed the world was the way it came about. Mm -hmm. So um, until the iPhone, um, the way cell phones came into existence was this. Uh, a cell phone maker, Motorola, Nokia, Sony, would go to the carriers, Verizon, AT&T, Singular, and say, uh, hey, we've got this really cool phone with this re really innovative feature. What do you think? And Verizon would say, mm, no, I don't think so. Out of my way. And that was the end of the, of the product. And um, they were the gatekeepers. They were the naysayers, the veto power. And so innovation was stagnant. They were very calcified and very resistant to change. So Steve Jobs of Apple came along with this idea for phone. And he would go to the carriers and say, OK, we're going to do a phone, but we're not going to tell you what it is. What do you <laughs> right, think? Right. And Verizon was like, get out of my office. You know, and, and none of them would play ball with him, except for Singular, where the guy said, you know, you guys have a good track record. We'll try it. So the CEO of Singular did not even see the phone until two weeks before the public did. Mm -hmm. The CEO! So all the engineers would work on pieces of it. No one saw the whole phone. So anyway, so of course it became a huge, huge hit. They sold millions of them, and it's now um, the second most popular smartphone after only the BlackBerry, and now they're going after that. Um, so all the other cell carriers were like woke up and they're like, wait a minute, could we have been playing this wrong all the time? Mm -hmm. So all these dominoes have started to, started falling. Google said, you know what, we're going to write an open right. phone operating system and any phone will be able to run it and you'll be able to make your own modifications. And the carriers are like, oh, we'll sign on to that. What? Yeah. The same carriers we were talking about before? And then the carry and then Verizon's like, oh, you know what? We're no longer going to limit you to the handsets that we approve. Any handset, any CDMA handset will run on our network from now on. And I was like, what? It's just like the tumbling dominoes. It's just amazing what's going to happen. So this is going to be the year of the mobile cell phone. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it's all because the iPhone taught them that innovation can mean profit. Mm -hmm. and and, what I think too is really interesting is that even with the iPhone, uh, so I mean, but it was a closed little system too. But even Apple, which is notorious for keeping its hardware closed, has been forced to start to open that up. So that to, they just released the developer SDK, right, right, so, right, and all that stuff. So see, open, David. We'll talk. It's a team. We should know more. <laughs> open. <laughs> and do you think that somewhere, like something about um, the tools? Uh, the Web 2.0 tools, the fact that people can, like, you know, they put their blog up and 57 people can comment that they agree, that is an injustice. Mm -hmm. Open that. Open that up or whatever, you know. Do you right. feel like, like, we're at this time where consumers actually have way more power than they've ever had before to, to raise a ruckus and demand what they want? Or why is all this change, why is all this shake up right now? I think so. I, I'm maybe not in terms of the comments, but in just well, in terms of the bloggers themselves. Yeah, yeah. That the fact that people with, a, with a, a point to make and a good way to make it mm -hmm. get noticed mm -hmm. and become famous. I mean, you know, Anna Marie Cox, who was writing Wonkette, now she's a, you know, got a magazine column because she was just an effective, funny writer and mm -hmm. had, a, had, an, uh, had an outlook. So, yeah, I think that anybody, in, in, a, way, in a way that the web was supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. You were saying this about the web. Now right. anyone can have a website, you know, everyone has a voice. But actually even more now, because yeah. blogs are meant to be ideas. Mm -hmm. So that's what people expect from them. Well, thanks for taking even more time for us. It's my pleasure. This is fun. <laughs> thanks.